Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Claudia Simone Dorscha. I'm a PhD in philosophy from Germany, and I would like to continue my short series on philosophers as psychologists. Part two, John Tauler on crisis as chance. John Tauler was a so-called mystical philosopher who lived a little later than his famous predecessor, Meister Eckhart. Tauler lived in the 14th century in a time and age which was, according to the uh, historian Günther Mensching, already modernity. It was the dawn of modernity. The Middle Ages with their typical medieval mindset of an omnipotent, omniscient God were nearly over and new inspirations, new arts, new sciences started to evolve and change the image of man completely in a way which even um, inspires us today. Modernity or the dawn of modernity in the 14th century did have much to do and did do much to the so-called mystical philosophy. Mystical philosophy of the 14th century is something quite different from the mystical uh, philosophy, at least in Christianity, in the 12th and 13th century. What has happened or in what far does mystical philosophy in John Tauler's time and age had already changed? This is a somewhat tricky question because it is not easy um, to answer. Mystical philosophy in a certain way remains the same over time because it always deals with the human individual, the human soul and its presupposed union with the divine source. This does not change in any time because it is an essential element, if not the core essential value of mystic philosophy as such. But mystic philosophy in the 14th century, in John Tauler's time and age, has been um, something which was much more in competition and was much more being questioned than it was in former days. And John Tauler was one of those mystic philosophers who uh, provided a deep and intense insight into so-called models of perceptions and allegorical models of perception. Tauler's basic interest is to explain how human perception and human recognition functions and how the so-called unio mystica, it means the conjunction of the individual human soul and the presupposed uh, divine source of being, God, may be described in epistemological terminology or in allegorical images. This is a quite complex topic. We will not dive deeper into this topic, but just give this as a short background of John Tauler's philosophical work. There is one very practical advice of Tauler's um, regarding human psychology. He once said, und glaubet mir auf mein Wort, dass es keine Drangsal im menschlichen Leben gibt, durch die Gott nicht eine neue Geburt hervorrufen möchte. This advice can be translated into English as follows. Believe me, there is no hardship and distress in human life, which may not be a prearrangement for a broader spiritual awareness. When we hear this sentence, we may feel reminded on the famous 
current sentence, crisis as chance. Through hardship, a new awareness may arise. Or, as the Latin thinkers said, per aspera ad astera, through hardship to a greater and broader knowledge of life or even the presupposed source of life. This is an epistemological program known since antiquity. In the Middle Ages, the concept of the benevolent God somehow interfered with this ancient view on hardship as a pre-arrangement of a broader knowledge and recognition. People ask themselves the classical question of so-called Theodice, as Leibniz stated later, how can a benevolent God, as supposed in a Christian faith, be responsible for all this hardship and misery? And the logical explanation mystical philosophers of the Middle Ages, and not only of the Middle Ages, but also in later times, gave what was that hardship and misery is actually no punishment or no sign of malice of God or an evil will of God, but it is a prearrangement for the improvement of the human soul and a broader spiritual awareness. So, if we compare this idea Taula held and thus standing in a long tradition, we cannot say that it is actually similar to what our two-day New Age gurus state when they say crisis as chance. Because in this modern day grasp, crisis as chance, we do mean something like uh, self-actualization or self-realization. How does it show? Maybe uh, we will change our job or change our partner or our dwelling place or go on a sabbatical or do something special as an expression of our self-actualization, crisis as chance. But this is very far from the medieval philosopher's mindset. Crisis as chance or going through hardship to a broader spiritual awareness did actually have nothing in common with self-realization which is all on the ego. It is in fact, in Tauler's view, the abolishment of the ego which makes people fearless and free.